War is terrible, nobody wants a war. But if we want to prevent it, we have to let every potential aggressor know we are capable of defending ourselves. We can take you on. And that's what it's all about, nothing else. I want to look out to the left, a moving position, possible enemy movement to the east. We're all soldiers, and although we've had a lot of missions abroad, like in Afghanistan, our basic training lies in national defense. Of course, we've already prepared our equipment so that we can keep our reaction time short if we have to deploy. It's early February 2023 in Breitungen, a small town in Thuringia. The German Army's 391st Panzer Grenadier Battalion marches in front of the Cultural Center. Breitungen is a partner town of the Mechanized Infantry Battalion, stationed in nearby Bad Salzungen. Today, young recruits are taking their oath. The battalion will be honored for its past deployments abroad. In summer, another one awaits the soldiers, this time in Lithuania. The members of this battalion are very aware of just how important the deployment in Lithuania is for freedom and peace in the Alliance area, in the Baltic region, in other words, where a direct confrontation with Russia seems conceivable. In summer 2024, some 150 of them will be deployed to Lithuania for six months. They will be part of the NATO Enhanced Forward Presence Battle Group. The group was created following Russia's annexation of Ukrainian Crimea. The EFP consists of four multinational battalions with over 1,000 soldiers each, stationed in the NATO states of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland. Their personnel are rotated every six months. These combat troops are intended to strengthen the four host countries militarily and deter Russia from attacking. Each battalion is led by one nation's army. The nation in charge of the Lithuania mission is Germany. The EFP battalion in Lithuania currently consists of around 1,700 servicemen and women, about 850 of whom have been sent by the German armed forces, while the others come from the Netherlands, Norway, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Latvia and Luxembourg. The grenadiers from Bad Zoltzungen already were in Lithuania four years ago, with their aging martyr infantry vehicles. A few days later, we're back in Thuringia, in the Kufhäuser Mountains, where a platoon from the 393rd Panzer Battalion from Bad Frankenhausen is setting up a screening post. A screening post simply allows for advanced vision, some three kilometers ahead of your own forces. This reconnaissance gives the actual line more time to react. The task on the front line consists of spotting and delaying the enemy until your forces have gathered. At the NATO level, this is also how you could describe the role of the North Thuringia Battalion in 2023. With around 30 battle tanks, it belongs to NATO's Very High Readiness Joint Task Force, the VJTF. The VJTF was set up in 2014 in response to Russia's annexation of Crimea the year before. It consists of around 10,000 soldiers and is the spearhead of the NATO Response Force, NRF which has 40,000 troops in total. The troops for NATO's VJTF and NRF are provided by different NATO partners for up to three years at a time. Countries take turns commanding the forces. Deployment time to any location within the Alliance area must be two to seven days. It's mostly land forces, but some Air Force and Navy too. In the event of an attack on NATO territory, it must be the first to confront the aggressor. Together with the army of the NATO country under attack, they should hold off the aggressor until the alliance has brought in more troops. Last year, the Thuringian Battalion received new tanks for its operations, the Leopard 2 A7V. One of the tank commanders is Master Sergeant Josh. 
How does he see his unit's mission as part of the NATO response force and the heightened threat after Russia's attack on Ukraine? Of course, we've already prepared our equipment so that we can keep our reaction time short if we have to deploy. Apart from that, we try not to make ourselves nervous about it. The only place where I notice it a bit more is in my private life. I'm enjoying my free time more and not just taking it for granted, since I know in the back of my mind that things could escalate any time. In Eastern Europe, a war is raging. Keeping it away from NATO borders is another objective of the armored troops from Thuringia. Of course, we're following the war in Ukraine very closely and with great concern. You know, for me, war is something horrible. When I see the fighting going on there, what the Russian troops are doing, and what it means for the civilian population, I find it very, very frightening. I have to state that clearly. And we're ready to prevent something like that from happening on the territory of any of our NATO allies. The armoured troops from Bad Frankenhausen, the grenadiers from Bad Zolzingen, and their comrades from the 37th Panzer Grenadier Brigade are facing a challenging few months. It's spring in 2023. At the Altmark training area in the German state of Saxony-Anhalt, First Lieutenant Jordan and his men from the 391st Panzer Grenadier Battalion are moving to an outpost. We are acting as a security platoon. My mission with the EFP is a bit different from my usual mission in the German army. Here we're providing security for the command post. Blocking entrances, securing buildings and calming worried villagers. These are the tasks of the security platoon, all the while keeping an eye on the enemy. Before long, the security platoon receives reinforcements. They position themselves in the nearby forest to fend off a possible attack by enemy paratroopers. Major Johannes works in the battle group's command post. He's a member of the Grenadiers from Bad Salzungen. German, Dutch and Belgian soldiers work side by side around the clock here. Each must keep their own commanders updated. The officer from Thuringia says all NATO partners involved are aware of the volatile nature of their upcoming deployment in Lithuania, very close to Russia and its ally, Belarus. I think we have a high level of professionalism here. Everyone has a common mindset. We're all soldiers, and although we've done a lot of missions abroad, like in Afghanistan, our basic training lies in national defense. That's the case with all countries. Everyone is professional and fully prepared for the mission. Meanwhile, a practice operation to delay the enemy is happening just a few kilometers from the command post. The grenadiers are now slowly retreating. They're planting minefields. If a vehicle drives over the wire, a projectile is triggered and flies into the target. Barrier one of three is closed, working on the second. The mines are meant to buy time to rally for a counterattack. Whether defending or attacking, German soldiers must be able to fight without a weapon. We catch up with Master Sergeant Josh, the tank commander from Bad Frankenhausen, at a close combat course at the infantry school in Hemmelberg. But why does a tank soldier need to be able to fight by hand? I hope for their sake that they never have to leave the tank because that means something will have gone wrong. But the ability to engage in close combat is important for all soldiers because you won't always be sitting inside your tank. The course is intended to teach participants how to hold their own in close combat and train other soldiers how to do so. You reach under the weapon, grab the shoulder rest, just like I did, turn the weapon 180 degrees, then use it to punch either to the face or neck of the enemy. Get ready, on the grass. The training is meant to push soldiers to their limits. Quick, crawl through the forest and take the trench. Josh, stand up. Box. One, two, one. Step on it. Again, come on. That's right. Through there. 
and stay together. Pick up the pace, guys. Get on with it. And keep fighting. Come on now. On with it. Observation stop. Enemy sighting. Keep it up. Keep it up. Move. Move. Enemy neutralized. You've disarmed them. Take their pistols. That's it. Fight the enemy. Neutralized. Stay on me. Get up here. The goal is up ahead. The next station simulates combat against several people. The goal is to apply the technique, but it's important to stay in the container for one minute. It's the same as sitting in the tank when you're fighting. It's uncomfortable. Here you just notice it more in your own body when you have to fight as a couple and stave off four attackers. But we managed in the end. So we've successfully completed this part of the training. The grenadiers in Bad Zoltzungen also continue their training through the spring and summer. Major Johannes and his unit prepare for nuclear, biological and chemical warfare. The soldiers don a full protection kit. They train in a closed room with irritant gas. In addition to the physical strain, the soldiers have to deal with the mental pressure. The goal is to show the men that their gear works. The mask fits. It's your mask. Take it with you. Take good care of it, then you'll be well equipped. Meanwhile, First Lieutenant Jordan is on the firing range. So the pistol is basically our second weapon. In other words, if my G36 jams or I find myself in close quarters or urban combat, the P8 is a better choice than the big, bulky rifle. The Grenadiers have gotten some new equipment, a sign things are changing in the wake of the Ukraine war. So, starting from the top, this is our combat helmet. What we have here is the very latest version. It has the same level of protection as the old version, but here I have the option of wearing my pelters, my hearing protection, underneath. My body armor will hold direct fire up to 7.62. The soft body armor will also stop shrapnel. This is all new equipment. We've had it since last year, and we're very happy with it. In Bad Frankenhausen, precision is needed for Master Sergeant Josh and his comrades next task. They are loading tanks for transportation. They're destined for the Italian island of Sardinia, where the NATO VJTF troops are meeting for an exercise. It's early May 2023, and the VJTF troops have set up camp in the south of the island. Over 2,000 soldiers from Germany, Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Latvia and Luxembourg are participating in the NATO exercise Noble Jump. The exercise has been planned well in advance. It's important to select areas and terrain that are more challenging in terms of geography and climate and places that require deployment from sea. And that's why this exercise, planned long before Putin's invasion of Ukraine, takes place in Sardinia. But in principle, it could be almost anywhere. The tank company from Bad Frankenhausen has taken part in several training sessions in the last few days. The commander briefs his troops. The position of the Norwegians. Trench, barrier, target. His troops have been put to the test here in Sardinia. 
dass ich immer ihre Höhen weiß. Ich bin sehr I'm very happy with the boys and girls so far. But the terrain is giving us a bit of a hard time and that's on the material. But the point is to prepare for any situation, not just the training grounds in Germany. As things wind down in the camp, Josh goes for his usual evening run, fully equipped. It's his own initiative and a part of his preparation for upcoming commando training in Hamelburg. Two days later, it's time for the big exercise. The show of force is intended to demonstrate the full range of the Alliance's combat power. Apart from military personnel, journalists from all over the world have come. The scenario is this. The enemy force has landed on the island. NATO's VJTF troops are alerted. Dutch armored infantrymen are the first to move in. Their task is to hold the enemy at bay until their own troops arrive. They receive backup from Norwegian snipers and artillery. Norwegian mechanized infantry follows in their armored personnel carriers. Next, the Norwegian and German Leopard tanks engage the enemy. The ground troops receive air support from Tiger attack helicopters. The battle lasts about an hour, the time it takes to repel the enemy. The generals are pleased, including the head of the regional NATO headquarters in Naples. Well, it's a clear message to any potential adversary about the strength of the, the NATO alliance. And again, I stress, defensive alliance with a 360-degree view of any threat that may arise. But it is meant to be a strong signal to any potential adversary. It's the end of June, 2023. In Brotoroda, in the Thuringian forest, civilians join to bid farewell to the soldiers who will soon be heading to Lithuania to join the EFP forces. The unit is prepared for the six-month deployment. The commander makes clear the mission's importance. The strategic lage Litauens the strategic position of Lithuania is of course also very critical, due to the enclave of Kaliningrad on the one hand and Belarus on the other. As a result, we are very aware that the Baltic states, including Lithuania, feel the threat from Russia much more strongly than we do. In the beginning of August, around 150 grenadiers will be heading to the Baltic states. Today, they are presented with some keepsakes. A few weeks after the exercise in Sardinia, the tank troops from Bad Frankenhausen are back to training, this time in Saxony. More firing practice for Commander Josh and his comrades. A Leopard 2 can carry almost 40 grenades. Today, they are firing training grenades with a concrete head. The platoons fire separately, four tanks at a time. And here too, just as in Sardinia, it's all about defense. The first attacking forces are worn down by us in what we call a delaying operation. In other words, we slow down the enemy's attack. In the two weeks they've been in Saxony, the tankers have fired countless shells of live ammunition. The local district administrator pays a visit to the troops. She is joined by the mayor of Bad Frankenhausen and other politicians. They're allowed to watch the firing and take in some interesting facts about tank shells. This is the second type. It's not quite as heavy. Then you can also fire the ammunition so that it really detonates on impact with the target and causes the damage. Or you can, for example, time the ammunition so that it detonates with a delay. This is unique to the A7V. Firing around from a main battle tank is also part of the program for the visitors. Of course, it's also a bit cramped at first. From the outside, the tank looks so big, 
But once you're inside, you realize that everything has been planned down to the last centimeter. Yes, exactly. Everything has its place. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. For the commander, such visits are a chance to network with politicians. It's certainly always good when politicians have direct insight and know how the troops work and what they're talking about. So you could see it as a bit of lobbying. Even though this is regional, it also has an impact at the state and federal level. The district administrator tells us that she also sees her visit as recognition and appreciation for the soldiers and what they are prepared to do for the community. In Rukla, Lithuania, the grenadiers from Bad Zoltzungen have arrived for their deployment on NATO's eastern flank. They are preparing for a nighttime exercise. A field post is being set up. The platoon leader inspects his troops. This is a lookout position. My intention is, if it's pitch black here, I don't want to be fumbling around in the dark, but move closer to the edge of the forest so that I can react as quickly as possible if an enemy appears. Their mission is to keep watch and fend off all enemies. In NATO exercises, the enemy is usually played by friendly troops. But here in the Baltic, there is little doubt as to where the real enemy threat is. The NATO EFP battle group is stationed in Rukla, a town in southeastern Lithuania. The location is of strategic importance, close to the Suvalki Gap, what NATO calls the 100-kilometer-long border between Lithuania and Poland. NATO fears that Russian troops could invade Lithuania with soldiers from the Kaliningrad region and Belarus, cutting off the three Baltic countries from the rest of the NATO alliance. This scenario is not at all unrealistic. In February 2022, Russian troops invaded Ukraine from Belarus. Platoon leader Jordan has finished his patrol. He gives his squad leaders some final instructions. It's going to be a long night. Okay. The next day at the barracks in Rukla. Jordan and his platoon are preparing for yet another exercise near the Belarus border. Last night was a success. We had our first enemy contact at midnight. We detected an enemy scouting party and immediately captured it. At the command post of the multinational battle group, we meet Major Johannes again. Today he is here as an instructor, shadowing a Belgian infantry company, counterattacking the enemy and assessing their performance. Why are we doing this? We're here to train defense, of course, but offensive tactical activities are part of any defense. This means that if I've stopped the enemy in front of my mine barrier at some point, I don't want to leave him there. This is perhaps also a lesson that can be learned from Ukraine. The goal there must also be to win back the territory or defeat the enemy where they are. The exercise is also being followed by generals and officers from Belgium all the things you need to do after the fight to get uh, out of the TLSA. The Belgian company advances slowly, but soon comes under enemy fire. They're like, like 50 meters over there and then yes. again over there. Okay. The enemy wants to prevent the blue forces from attacking with vehicles along this path. That's why they've blocked this road with mines. And now, of course, this minefield must first be secured by our own forces. And then, pioneers have to be deployed here to clear the way for the vehicles that will follow along the road. The battle lasts more than two hours. Afterwards, Major Johannes evaluates the exercise with the Belgian company commanders and thanks the enemy actors from Lithuania for their effort. Two days later, the Thuringian Panzer Grenadiers and the rest of the EFP battle group moved to Pabrada, close to the border with Belarus. Over the next two weeks, they'll be practicing defense exercises with the Lithuanian army.
It's now mid-October 2023, and NATO's VJTF troops are practicing live firing in the Lüneburger Heide in Lower Saxony. Today, in full battle formation, with almost 30 Leopard 2 main battle tanks from Bad Frankenhausen and 14 Puma infantry fighting vehicles from Bavaria, the armored troops from Bad Frankenhausen will soon have a break from being on alert with the VJTF, but the tension will remain. Division Commander von Butler follows the exercise closely. At the beginning of the year, he was greatly concerned about the war in Ukraine. How does he feel now? Well, first of all, we assume that it won't spread any further to the West. We can also see very clearly how the Ukrainian soldiers are defending themselves very successfully. And I think the troops we saw today can hold their own against any opponent. On the other hand, I hope it never comes to that. 